Today we're going to cover the tapered condition modules condition properties. Ultimately, we're going to go over all of the tabs in this one video. And if you need to know how to use the drawing tools, we're going to cover those in a separate video as well. So starting up here in the upper left, you have your description. Now this is the condition description. You can fill this out to be whatever you would like. Moving to the right, you have the manufacturer that's going to be applied to your sloped boards or your general tab boards. Now this would be for a fully tapered system. To the right of that, you have the method for your corners. So you can choose whether you're going to miter these in the field, whether you're going to buy them pre-cut, or if you're going to stagger the corners rather than mitering them. Continuing to the right again, you have roof height. Roof height is simply an information only tab. It's just there to be a general reference point for you to know how tall the roof is you're going to be working on. This Cricut applied percentage, this has to do with the adhesive, if you're going to be using adhesive on your Cricuts rather than fasteners. Ultimately, open this up, and then you'd be able to go through and choose your options. Now, instead of walking you through all of that, I'm going to have you reach down here and click on the notes option. And if you have additional questions on that, read through these paragraphs that walk you through how to fill that information out. If you do have additional questions, feel free to give us a call and we'd be happy to assist you through those. Now continuing down, you have your sloped boards. Now this would be for a fully tapered system. So in this case, you see that we're producing a slope. In this case, it's a quarter inch per foot. If you want to change that, click in that field and you can either type in the fractions or the decimals that will get you to the slope that you need per foot. Moving down, you have the type of insulation. Simply click the three dotted button and choose whatever insulation product you're going to be needing. Continuing down, you have the width and the length of the insulation board that you would be producing. In this case, we have it defaulted to a 4x4. Moving down, you have the number of boards in system. The number of boards in system is this middle column, and it's allowing you to have either a 2-board or a 3-board, or maybe even if you wanted to go all the way up to an 8-board system, you have that capability. Simply change this number, and it will allow a different number of fields to become available. In this case, we have two, so we're producing an X and Y. If we were to change this to three, now you'll see that we have X, Y, and Z all available for us to make modifications. As you change your slope, you will need to change the design for that board that's being used in the system based on that slope per foot you're using in the manufacturer as well. The next option you have is the thickness of the drain. So in this case, it's saying that you're starting with a half inch thick board. If you wanted to start, let's say instead of starting with your X board, you wanted to start with your Y, well then you would change the thickness at drain to match whatever the Y board's detail is. In this case, it would be inch and a half. So you would change that number to be 1.5 inches and you would start your drawing with a Y board and then it would go into an X plus fill. If you wanna start with an X, go ahead and leave that that half inch and it'll go ahead and start you with an X when you start to draw. Continuing down, you have the minimum thickness of your first board. Now this is going to control this first sloped board detail that you're looking at here. In this case, we have it as half inch because we're doing a quarter inch per slope foot, and that's going to be an X board that starts with a half inch minimum. Ultimately, you can type in these design fields here for that slope board detail to change the information, and you have this adds column. Now the adds column is just adding whatever number you type in, it's adding that many additional boards. Most of the time this column is left zero and you're gonna catch that with waste percentage on the pricing screen. Continuing to the right, if you're gonna be producing sumps on your tapered project, this is where you would turn your sump boards on. You would fill out the slope per foot that you need for your sumps. You would also choose the type of insulation and you would fill out the width and the length of that sump that you're providing. Now in this case, if your sumps are calculated at a full sump, not using the half board, you're going to be producing eight four by four pieces. If you choose half board, we're actually going to be cutting the number of eight four by four pieces down into four four by four pieces. So that's how that half board option is going to work for you. The length, again, the width and length is just the width and length of the sump board you're using. And then the number of sump board is ultimately how many Q panels, if you're going to be using Q panels, how many Q panels are you using when digitizing that sump? Are you using a Q or are you using one Q panel or are you using a QQ panel or is it a Q panel plus fill? Ultimately, if it's just going to be one, type the number one in and you'll be set. 
you're not using sumps, go ahead and turn that tool off and it's going to turn off the drawing tool for you as well. The next tab you have are your crickets. Now you're going to see a lot of the same information and the reason being is because you're going to be filling out that information except in this case it's not for the fully tapered system. In this case it would be for any crickets you need. So you do have the ability to, to choose a different manufacturer if you were going to be producing a different insulation for your crickets than you had for your sloped board detail. You do still have slope, so as you can see this is a greater slope per foot. We have our type in here as well, simply change the type, the width and the length of the board you're using, the number of boards in the system, and the minimum thickness of that first board. So again, a lot of information that you've already filled out on the general tab, the difference is that this is pertaining to the crickets specifically. Now, you do have your corner method here as well for those crickets, so you can choose how you want to set those up. Nine times out of ten, we always just see mitered as the option. Again, for your cricket slope board detail, very similar to the general tab. You can change the design if you want to, and if you wanted to add additional boards, you could by simply typing in the number. Again, we do recommend doing that on the pricing screen using the waste percentage rather than typing in a specific number of extra boards. Moving to the next tab, you have your filler. Now you'll notice that we have two fields here at the top, filler increment and cricket filler increment. These will always have a number displayed in them. You need to make sure that whatever this number is displaying is populated in your sloped filler board number one or your cricket filler board number one. If you had something that didn't match, for example, if I type in three inches, the program does not like it. The reason the program does not like it is because it's telling you that you will not get a perfectly tapered system with a thickness of three inch fill in here. That's what this filler increment and the Cricut filler increment field are displaying to you. It's displaying the correct filler inch increment that you're gonna need for you to get a nice, perfectly sloped tapered system. So in this case, simply choose the thickness you need. And here we could do two inches and now the program is happy. Now that's not to prevent you from adding additional options. Let's say that instead of laying down two layers of two inch, you wanted to lay down one layer of four inch. Simply turn on sloped filler board number two, type in your thickness of four inches, type in the width and the length of the board, and choose the type of insulation you're using. The program is smart enough to know that when you would be placing two layers of two inch, it'll actually replace those two layers of two inch with a layer of four inch if you need it. Now that we've got that information filled out, Ultimately, you have your base and your cover options here as well. Now under the base option, you'll notice we only have one field. The reason we only have one field is we just don't have a second one out there available for you at this point in time. So how do we handle multiple layers of base? Well, the way that we handle multiple layers of base is we change the overall thickness here. So if we were gonna be laying two layers of 2.6, we would actually put this at 5.2 inches, 2.6 and 2.6 added together. Here we'll type in the width and the length of the board we're going to be ordering, and again we'll just use the same insulation in this case. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well why are you putting 5.2 inches? Well the reason we're doing that is so that way the fasteners are able to calculate the correct length based on the minimum and maximum protrusion you put in. However, because this is only one field, right now the program would produce a 5.2 thick piece of insulation for you on the pricing screen. So the way that you avoid that is by using the add-ons tab. In the add-ons tab, if you click over there, you'll notice that we have additional base layers of insulation. Well, it just so happens to be that we have quite a few options out here. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that we have two layers of 2.6 inches for our base. So the first thing we do is we turn off this one base layer from filler tab. Once you turn that off and you turn on the two base layers of 2.6, in the pricing screen, we're actually going to give you the insulation at a thickness of 2.6 inches rather than giving you the one layer of 5.2 inches. And I'll show you what that looks like in the pricing screen here in just a moment. So that's how we're going to handle multiple layers of base. If you need cover board, simply turn on the cover board and fill out the information and we'll apply that cover board as you do the takeoff on your drawing screen. The next tab that you have is your fasteners tab. Now there's a couple different ways that you can set this up. 
If you're going to be working with adhesive, it's important to note that you change the fasten to from all to none, and then you turn your adhesive on. Once you turn your adhesive on, this is going to operate the same way that the adhesive does inside of the area condition. Your units per square will always be one if you're using a spray foam adhesive, and you're going to want to make sure that you choose the correct spray foam adhesive you're working with, with the correct on center spray pattern. In this case, we're saying that we're going to be spraying down a 12 inch on center spray pattern. So make sure that you set the condition properties up on the fasteners, fasten to none, turn adhesive on, and in the units it will always be the number one. You'll adjust the coverage rate on the pricing screen using the wizard. Now, if you're not using adhesive, under the fasten to, you have a couple different options. In most cases, it's going to be all because you want to gang fasten through all of your layers of insulation. So once you choose all, you're now going to fill out the additional fastener information you need. How many fasteners would you like per square foot? That's what the number of fasteners per square foot is representing. If you would like to put 16 square foot in and do fasteners per board, you're more than welcome to. But in this case, we've left it one fastener per four square feet. The next field you have is your minimum fastener protrusion. This is the minimum amount that that fastener has to go into the deck for you to be able to meet your FM ratings. The maximum fastener protrusion is saying, hey, the fastener cannot go through the deck any further than in this case, two and three quarters of an inch. If it were to go farther than two and three quarters of an inch, it's going to hit ducking or plumbing or some sort of electrical wire and so that's what the minimum and maximum fastener protrusion are doing for you. The greater the distance between this, the less variance you're going to have in the fastener lengths when you get out to the pricing screen. Moving down, you're now choosing the fastener type that you're going to be working with. Simply click the three dotted button and choose from the list that's out there. The next option you have are your pieces per carton. Now in the tapered module, we recommend that you leave this zero, and the reason being is because your fastener lengths are going to vary in size. Based on the size of the fastener, it dictates the amount that are going to come in that box. So if you leave this zero, we're going to give you the per piece breakout of all of the fasteners that you would need to use inside of your project. Coming down to the fasten two, this is just an information only tab. Moving down to your plate type, these are the plates that you're going to be calculating for those fasteners that you would need on this project. If you need to swap them out, click that three dotted button and choose whatever option is available. If you need to create it, feel free to click that blue plus there at the top or the copy and insert and you can create your new item and choose that as your option. The next tab that we have is the R values tab. Now with the R values tab, if you choose the insulation and you put the correct R per inch in here, what we will do is we will calculate the average R value in a C quantity and tilde code that you can use. Now if you wanted to see what that was, you could click on the C quantity and tildes tabs. You could go to the global tildes and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see average R value. Right now, if we were to go do some takeoff, this is going to tell us that our average R value is 9.1. Ultimately, we only calculate the average. We do not calculate the minimum or the maximum that you would get on the project. The miscellaneous tab, that's ultimately there for you if you need to add any miscellaneous items, but in most cases, you don't need to. Now, that's going to cover you for filling out your tapered module condition properties. If you have any questions on how to use the tapered on the drawing screen, please feel free to reference that video or you can reach out to our tech line and they'd be happy to answer any additional questions or any issues that you run into while working on the condition properties or the takeoff screen. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.